Hey guys, today I'm going to tell you what my worker bees think of Magic the Gathering. Every Friday we work from my home, and if we have to work Saturdays and Sundays, we work from my home because the building that we are in needs security cards and they're not open Sunday, so no one can get in Sunday, but sometimes we need to build a website or do some marketing over the weekend, mostly proposals, and yes, everyone gets paid. They're not doing work out of the goodness of their heart, right? They're doing it so they get paid. So when they come to my home, it obviously has a lot of magic, uh, lots and lots of magic stuff. Uh, it has anime, lots more anime than before, which I'll show you my new collection. I did buy quite a bit from Anime Missouri, which apparently there was a two Nazis at. I didn't see them and I didn't know about it until the event was over. But when I first explain, when they first learn that I play Magic or and I have a large collection, it's really hard not to. I have altered cards all over the place and just stacks and stacks of bulk everywhere. They recognize Magic from Crackgate. Uh, Crackgate happened in 2014. It was covered by everybody, including Time.com. So you... Most non-Magic magazines had a certain spin to it, which was relatively negative about Magic the Gathering. And I remember in 2014, my secretary at the time, our secretary at the time, Brianna, she was kind of uh, a Cali girl and very, very, very friendly, but also kind of clicky. And clicky into the popular cheek type. So she made fun of me for about two months about Crackgate and that it was a plumber convention in the sky. So that was the joke. The joke was the guy did not go to a magic event. He, a GP event, he went to a plumber's convention because of how many cracks there were. Now, why do these people not have belts on? I'm not sure, but if you go to any GP even today, this is what you expect to see. Now, I'm sure Wizard Coast has policies now, and this guy was banned. He was banned. Oh, here's a belt here, just not, the belt is not used correctly. But for a very long time, and even till today, when a new employee or a new vendor or a new graphic designer or a new photographer comes, hangs out Friday, we always work from my home Friday because parking, you know, parking is insanely expensive and Honestly, it's just better to work from home. It's more relaxed, there's food, but none of that. Now, every single one of the workers has mentioned this crack gate and if it was real. Then I have to explain, yes, it is real, and yes, it does happen at lower level events, and yes, this is a problem in our community that our hygiene and many times the argument from males, why we don't have more females, more women in magic is that this is an argument, right? This is a solid argument. But my argument would be what males want to see this either. Like, you know, male or female or any gender in between, like what individual would want to see this? What animal would want to see this, right? Butt crack after butt crack after butt crack. So... Yeah, that's the general, at least in Houston, when you, if a non-Magic player thinks about Magic the Gathering, they are thinking of this article in 2014. There's no movie, there's no anime, there's no TV show. There's not like a, a something f to explain Magic to a non-Magic player. There's only coverage in Crack.com and uh, BuzzFeed and... Reddit, uh, this was one of the most viewed over, like a, at the time, over a million views within a day or two. So everyone knew about it. Uh, even people who had no idea what magic was, they just thought it was kind of funny. And now flash forward to 2018, four years later, this guy is unbanned. I'm sure that he is planning to do it again because of all the attention. I mean, he was published in time.com. He has pictures and everywhere. He literally was, at one time, for a non-Magic player, he was the most famous, 
famous magic personality. These non-magic people don't know about Brian Kibler. They don't know about Alistair V. They don't care about them. They just know about the crack, um, the butt crack dude. So when you explain it on a professional level, it is very embarrassing. And I can see like why people don't tell other people profess- uh, who they work with that they play magic. Uh, because it is, you get into that scenario where you have to explain this away, right? You have to explain that, yes, this is typically what you see at a larger magic event. And yes. So the irony here is that this guy is kind of making fun of people, but he's kind of, I would not at all be surprised if he was, you know, and the next time around, he was one of the people being made fun of. And I get why Wizard of the Coast had to ban him. Very, very bad PR. Like Wizard of the Coast, their PR team is just horrendous. Like I, I've dealt with them and they're not, a lot of their marketing maneuvers, I guess you can call it a maneuver, are very, very sad and pathetic. Like, they could have got this under control quite... I mean, they could have mitigated the damages, right? But they just let it run rampant and they banned the guy, which then now everyone had to write a second article saying that he was banned from Magic, right? So he just kind of gave him ammo. And it got, kind of reminds me of the HQ Christine thing, they were so one-sided that when HQ bought up the sexual predators in Magic who own local games, this is not like fake. I mean, the, this is actually real. This is not emotions. I feel this way. No, I feel this way. No, this is actually police records. These are charges. This is the guy who owns a game store. You know, I mean, at the end of the day, like, I... I'll, I'll put it very frankly, there's BS and then there's Magic the Gathering, uh, which is a coast management. So I felt this was funny and it is something that has introduced a lot of people to Magic. Now, would it be better if it was introduced as a charity or as, um, you know, raising funds for stray dogs? Yeah, it would be a lot better, but Magic Gathering doesn't give two blanks about that. So this is the optimal way to get people to know about Magic. People who have never heard of Magic relate this 2014. Even today, I was interviewing a new photographer, Natalie, and see, what's that Friday? Yeah, we were at Friday because we went out to lunch and then we came back and then she interviewed around two. So we were interviewing her and then she mentioned that she had a cousin who played magic and I asked, oh, hi, hey, do you play magic? And she's like, no, but I read, you know, on BuzzFeed, a really interesting article about Crackgate. And I was like, yeah, yeah, that's cool. Thank you for coming, Natalie. Um, and so this is probably the biggest cultural I, media that is associated with our game. And we could either take it as a haha joke, which we wouldn't ban him. We would just say, oh, it's kind of funny. Please don't do it again. Or we can just ban him and then be embarrassed about it all the time. So in high school, any high school teenager, this is my advice to you in high school or middle school where it's a lot of drama and you don't realize that college, it gets a lot better. At least it it got a lot better for me in college and definitely in law school and now that I own my own business, I get to choose who I want to hire and who I want to work with. So if you're a bully, then get the blank out because I'm not going to pay you money because I'm not going to hire you. So that is, life has just got way better um, since I left high school. But during high school, one of the things that people used to make fun of me for doing is magic playing magic. Now, if I told everyone I played magic, then they can't harm me, right? So if you wear it on your sleeve proudly, what can they say? They say, oh, you play magic? Yeah, I told you I play magic. So what? So we have Wizard of Coast that is so social, economically, politically activist, you know, so just re- like they are the nerd in high school who is so afraid of telling people that they play magic that people beat them up for playing magic. When the solution is super obvious, uh, to me at least, 
is tell people you play Magic. Tell people why you enjoy the game. It's a very intellectually stimulating game. You meet friends. You get to pe play with people from all over. Uh, the artwork is fantastic. The game mechanics are amazing. And, you know, compared to you drinking or smoking or doing drugs, this is a lot better for someone in high school, right? A lot better. So instead of like presenting a reasonable argument, you're just hiding it and being embarrassed by it. And, you know, I think this is hilarious. I, I would I would just run with the joke and I would if I was Wizard Coast, I wouldn't ban the guy. I would say, oh, you know, uh, good job. And then make, make, you know, just a joke. If you can joke about it, then it won't hurt you because what are they going to say? It's the same thing in high school. If you tell people you play Magic, then they cannot really hurt you for playing Magic. Or they can't say mean things because it wouldn't affect you. You already told them. Um, and that was my high school in a nutshell. Uh, I do re realize that I could have had a much better experience in high school and middle school than I did if I followed that. Uh, you know, If you like it, if you're proud of it, wear it on your sleeve and if anyone attacks it, that's fine because... It's already out there. I, I do realize that I did not listen to that. I didn't know about that until after I left. When I went to college, my first semester, I became super popular. And it was because I didn't care as much anymore. When you're in New York City, you you become a different person. And, um, and I, I really enjoyed my time at NYU and really enjoyed my time as in law school as my fraternity, as the fraternity head which is called the magistrate. I don't know why we just don't call me president, but magistrate. And yeah, and that's because, you know, I play things that I like to do. I like watch anime, watch Korean drama, watch Taiwanese drama. I used to watch this show uh, called Fire and Ice or Ice Fantasy or something. And I was so into it. Uh, none of my coworkers at the, the startup really understood it, but they knew I watched Korean drama and, you know, they can't really make fun of you for watching it if you enjoy it, right? It's like, what are they gonna say? And, and if you put it out in the open and you're really honest about it, then one of my friends uh, that I still talk to her today, she's into Korean drama and sometimes we talk about what shows we, we are, she's in Seattle now, working for Amazon actually, and we talk about what shows we like and things like that nature, so I would not have had that relationship with her unless I was open with the fact that I watch Korean dramas. Well, anyway, that is it. Um, I hope you guys kind of know what I'm saying. If you're younger, uh, if you like something and people think it's nerdy, don't pay attention to them. Those people don't matter in the long run. They really, really do not matter. And at the end of the day, those bullies are going to ask you for a job and you're going to be able to say no. That's what I've been able to do uh, in the last uh, four months. I've turned away two different bullies in high school, one, both of them in high school, and they wanted to work for my company because they saw it you know, on LinkedIn. And I said no. Well, one of them, I didn't, he gave me his phone number, I didn't call him. And the other one, I just said, no, we're not, this job is closed. The job was not closed. Anyway, bye.